Chapter 7. Ma was right. The guardhouse moves through time and space the same way the cars in the 90-year-old cyclone rattle along the wooden tracks. My hands reach out for something to hold, but the round walls of the guardhouse are smooth. There are no levers to pull or buttons to push. We just swerve and swoop for the longest minute of my life. Are we there yet? I ask breathlessly. Almost, Ma says. Then she leans down and whispers in my ear. You're doing great, Jax. We're going to land just like an airplane, so brace yourself. When my ears pop, I grab hold of the iron ring on the inside of the back door. It feels like we're actually picking up speed. Hold on, Ma shouts, seconds before we plummet to the ground with a shuddering thud. I swallow hard and take a few deep breaths. You okay, Jax? Ma asks. Her strong hands are still gripping my shoulders, keeping me upright. I open my eyes, and the sealed guardhouse is still pitch black. My knees feel a bit wobbly, but I let go of the iron ring in the door. I don't know if I'm okay, but I'm here to help, not be helped. So I clear my throat and say, Ready, Ma? With more confidence than I actually feel. Ma takes her hands off my shoulders. With a grunt, she pushes open the door. It's hot. That's the first thing I notice. And it's dark, even though it doesn't seem to be nighttime. Ma gently pushes me ahead of her, so I'm the first one to step out of the guardhouse. My feet sink away into spongy soil, and I start to sweat almost right away. It feels like the inside of the greenhouse at the Botanic Garden. The plants around us look tropical. It's so humid, even the leaves are sweating. Strange squawking sounds come from the trees above. I think we're in some sort of jungle. Is this where dragons live? I ask over my shoulder. The look on Ma's face isn't reassuring. She stands in the doorway of the guardhouse and scowls at the world around us. Ma starts muttering something under her breath. I watch as she runs a finger along the dewy surface of a glossy green leaf. She sticks her finger in her mouth, pulls it out, and concludes, Ain't no magic here. That's not good. We left Brooklyn because there wasn't enough magic there either. Are you sure? I ask. Maybe we should ask somebody. Ma looks at me sideways. You see anybody around here, Jax? No, but wasn't someone supposed to meet us? I ask. That's usually how it works, Ma says. I think we must have overshot the mark. There's no gear shift inside the gear house, but I'm hoping Ma knows how to put it in reverse. Well, let's just go back, I suggest. Ma shakes her head. That's the wrong direction. We need to go across, not back. Magic left this earth a long time ago. We won't find it in the past. Can you make the guardhouse go across? Sure. Parallel realms exist in different dimensions. Time travel is like whizzing down a slide. Crossing dimensions is more like skipping double dutch. You got to wait for the right moment and slip between the ropes. I swat at the biggest mosquito I've ever seen. My clothes are sticking to my skin, but I'll get eaten alive by bugs if I take off my shirt. How do you steer that thing? With my mind, Ma says absently. When it becomes clear she's not going to offer further explanation, I prompt Ma to say more. So you just think about a place and that's where it goes? Pretty much. Transporters respond to the intention of the traveler. I wasn't thinking about this place. Were you? No. Ma wipes her forehead with the back of her hand. Whew. It's hotter here than Brooklyn in July and twice as humid. Ma reaches up to plump her snowy halo of hair, which is starting to droop a bit. Well, since we're here, we might as well have a look around, she says. I'm not sure that's such a good idea, but I trail after Ma as she pushes aside plants with leaves that are bigger than my head. She uses her cane to beat back the dense undergrowth. After a while, the vegetation thins and the ground beneath becomes rocky and hard. I'm so busy checking for snakes and other creepy crawlies that I bump into Ma when she stops suddenly. Well now, that's something you don't see every day. I peer around Ma and gasp. We're standing at the edge of a steep cliff, and in the distance is an erupting volcano. Dark clouds of ash spew out of the top, and red lava snakes down the side of the mountain. Far below us, I can see creatures fleeing from the eruption, and even from a distance, it's clear they're dinosaurs. The distant herd of long-necked sauropods doesn't worry me, but then Ma points at something in the sky, and I look up in time to see a flock of pointy-beaked pteranodons soaring overhead. Even though they're high above us, I duck and tug at the belt on Ma's overcoat to pull her back from the edge of the cliff. Maybe we should stay close to the guardhouse, I suggest. Ma opens her purse. The dragons have started to screech and whine, but Ma ignores them and takes out the gold pocket watch instead. She hands me the bag and says, Hold this for me while I check our coordinates. I take the bag from Ma. I thought that was a watch, I say as Ma flips open the gold case. It is, she says, but it's also a compass. Hmm, that's odd. What's odd, I ask anxiously. We seem to have gone back, way back in time. Ma glances at the lush tropical landscape and concludes, This must be the Mesozoic era, Jurassic or Cretaceous period, I'd say, judging from the flora and fauna. What do you think, Jax? That's really not my specialty, I say, trying not to think of all the ways people get eaten in the dinosaur movies I've seen. Why did we land here? I thought we were living dragons, not dinosaurs. There are certain similarities between the species, Ma says thoughtfully. But you're right, Jax, this isn't our destination. I didn't intend for us to come here, but Ambrose did say the transporter was acting up. Ma clicks the compass shut and slips it into her coat pocket. Then she squints at something beyond the edge of the cliff. She points with a cane and asks, You see that? 
I take a small step forward and crane my neck to see what Ma is pointing at. Something is sparkling on a narrow ledge about five feet below the cliff's edge. Jump down and grab that for me, Jax. I stare at Ma like she's lost her mind, but then I remember that I did sign up to be her helper, so I hand her back her purse and kneel down to get a closer look. What is it? I ask. I don't know, Ma replies, but it could come in handy down the road. When I hesitate, Ma adds, the sooner you grab it, the sooner we can get back to the transporter. I scan the red sky for more hungry pteranodon. Then I take off my book bag, take a deep breath, and sit down with my legs dangling over the edge of the cliff. I check for footholds and then flip over and start lowering myself down. Ma squats at the cliff's edge, urging me to take my time, but I just want to get this over with. Last year, Vic and I got to try rock climbing at our school. We wore harnesses in case we fell, and there were mats on the floor of the gym. I don't have a harness now, and it's a long way down. I focus on making one move at a time, and before long, I'm able to drop onto the ledge. It's just a couple of feet to your left, Jax, Ma says. There are tufts of vegetation sprouting out of the cliff. I grab hold of a clump of grass with one hand, and with the other I reach for the sparkling shard. I tug as hard as I can without losing my balance, but the crystal doesn't come out of the cliff. It's stuck, I tell Ma. She frowns, then lowers her cane so that I can grab hold of it. Poke it with this, she suggests. Am I loosen it? I jab the stick at the cluster a couple of times, and sure enough, part of the glittering rock comes loose. I toss the biggest shard up to Ma. She catches it and then reaches down for the cane. I tuck a smaller fragment of the rock into my pocket and start climbing back up the cliff face. It's easier going up than down, and Ma helps pull me over the edge when I'm within reach. Is that a diamond? I ask once I'm back on my feet. Quartz, Ma says as she examines the hunk of rock. Is it valuable? I ask as I slip my arms through the straps of my book bag. Before Ma can answer, the ground beneath our feet shudders as the volcano belches out more lava and smoke. My eyes grow wide, and even Ma looks worried. She slips the shard into her pocket and says, Let's go, Jax. Ma doesn't have to tell me twice. I take the lead and plunge back into the jungle, swatting bugs and branches out of my way. Birds in the treetops screech, and I get the feeling it's not me and Ma they're worried about. There's something else in the jungle. I can't see it, but I can sense something moving along with us. If it is a dinosaur, I sure hope it's a vegetarian like Triceratops and not a meat-eater like T-Rex. I glance over my shoulder at Ma, but she just yells, Keep going! As soon as I see the guardhouse, I dash inside and wait for Ma to join me. She pulls the door open wide, but doesn't come in. Instead, Ma holds her cane before her like a sword and takes a look around. The birds are still making a lot of noise, but whatever was following us seems to have stopped. Ma backs toward the guardhouse and then steps inside. We pull the door shut and huddle together, breathing hard in the dark. We wait for the roller coaster ride to start, but nothing happens. I don't know what's worse, landing in the wrong place or going no place at all. Ma? Yes, Jax. Why aren't we moving? Ma sighs heavily. I don't know, Jax. I better take a look. You stay here. She shoves open the door of the guardhouse, but I grab hold of her arm. There's something out there. It's okay. I'm a witch, remember? Nobody messes with me. I got magic on my side. Ma pries her arm free and hands me her purse. Hold this and be ready to go when I give the signal, okay? Then she steps outside and pushes the door shut behind her, leaving it open just enough to let in a sliver of light. I clutch the straps of Ma's purse and think about what I should do. I won't see any signal if I stay inside this dark guardhouse, and Ma may be a witch, but we still got lost in time, which means she needs more than magic on her side. I'm just a scared nine-year-old boy, but I came along to help Ma, so I decide that's what I'm going to do. I set Ma's purse on the floor of the guardhouse and push open the heavy black door. What I see surprises me. Ma is sitting on a mossy log with her eyes closed. She looks calm and peaceful, like she could doze off right here in the middle of this steamy, scary jungle. Without opening her eyes, Ma starts talking to me. You don't need to be out here, Jax. You just sit tight, and I'll try to get us back on track in a minute or two. I'm your helper, I remind her. Can't help you if I'm hiding out in the guardhouse. Ma smiles and opens her eyes. True, she says, patting the spot behind her on the log. And right now, I could use all the help I can get. I walk over and sit down next to Ma. Are you tired, I ask her. Ma sighs and rubs her eyes. I've been on the job too long, Jax. These old bones need an extended vacation. Can't you just retire? Sure, but who's going to carry on? i got to think about the future of the profession, pass the torch, so to speak. I press my lips together and think for a moment. What if Ma were to pass the torch to me? Mama didn't want to be Ma's apprentice, but maybe I could take her place. What about me, I ask? What about you? What if you pass the torch to me? That's sweet of you, Jax, but I don't know if you're cut out for this kind of work. Because I'm a boy? Don't be silly, Ma says with a frown. I just think, well, Jax, you're a lot like your mama. That's true, but maybe that could work to my advantage. Maybe that's a good thing, I tell Ma. After all, Mama's real smart. You said so yourself. And she's good at solving problems, too. Plus, she never gives up even when bad things happen, like when my dad died or when the landlord tried to throw us out. So maybe it's a good thing that we're so alike. I'm a quick learner, and I don't mind if things aren't ordinary all the time. Ma's looking at me like she might actually change her mind about training me to become a witch, but then something stirs in the bushes behind us, and I jump in spite myself. Ma puts a comforting hand on my knee. 
We'll talk about your qualifications later. Right now, we need to get the transporter up and running, Ma says. I just need a moment to clear my mind. Ma closes her eyes again, but I keep my eyes open in case whatever's moving in the bushes is hungry and sizing me up for a snack. I want to prove to Ma that I would make a good apprentice, but I also want her to hurry up and focus on getting us out of here because I'm ready to go now. Whatever's lurking in the bushes behind us starts to growl. I jump up and get ready to run back to the guardhouse, but Ma doesn't budge. Instead, she just reaches her hand inside her coat pocket and clutches the shard of crystal she put there earlier. Tell me what you know about Madagascar, Jax. As scared as I am right now, I know what Ma's doing. She's trying to distract me so I won't start to panic, but it's too late for that. The leafy branches behind Ma start to wave and then snap as the creature prepares to spring from the shadows. Run, Ma, run! I cry as I sprint back to the guardhouse. I'm moving so fast that I slam into the door on the opposite side of the round stone building. But when I turn around, Ma's not behind me. She's still sitting on the log with her eyes closed. The creature's growl builds to a full-blown roar, and then Ma's eyes flash open. She pulls Crystal out of her pocket and holds it high above her head. Then she looks straight at me and points her cane at the guardhouse. The black door slams shut, leaving me alone in the dark. Ma! 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 I scream and bang on the door. I lean against it with all my weight, but nothing happens. I turn around and feel along the curved stone wall until I reach the second door. I push as hard as I can, but that door doesn't budge either. I'm trapped inside the guardhouse, which means I'm safe from the beast. But Ma's out there with only her cane and the crystal to protect her. What chance does she stand against a ferocious dinosaur? I turn back to the door that Ma slammed shut. I press my ear against it and try to hear what's going on outside. Over the loud thudding of my racing heart, I hear a strange crackling sound. It gets louder and louder as whatever's making the noise draws closer to the guardhouse. Ouch! I jump back as an electric su- I jump back as an electric shock makes my ears sizzle. I watch in amazement as blue currents of electricity snake across the doors and along the walls. Then the guardhouse starts to shake. Ma! If I bang on the door, I might get electrocuted, so I just yell Ma's name as loud as I can. When no one answers, I sink to the floor of the guardhouse and bury my face in Ma's purse, even though there's no one here to see me cry. I just want to go home, I whisper through my sobs. The transporter must hear me because it suddenly shoots upward, and the roller coaster ride starts all over again.